There's a wide range of filters that we can apply to our lens before taking our picture. But probably two of the most common are graduated filters and polarizing filters. Let's take a look at graduated filters first. When we think about why we may want to use the automatic exposure bracketing option, which we've dealt with in another video, we do that in cases where the contrast and exposure range in our scene is greater than the camera can cope with in one shot. Now we can experience a situation a little like this where we take a shot and the foreground is exposed just about right, but we can clearly see that the sky is well overexposed. If we reduce the exposure to get more detail in the sky, then we record the foreground much too dark. Now this sort of issue is not actually uncommon and it could be made far worse if we have a higher contrast light. So there are two ways to address this issue. One is via the auto exposure bracketing and use of our image editor. The other is to apply a graduated filter to our lens. Now these come with an adapter ring for your lenses and a filter holder that slides over the ring which holds one or two graduated filters. So we slip the graduated filter down over the lens restricting the light in the sky where we need less exposure. Filters come in a variety of strengths, but of course we can often use two together if we need to build them up. The graduated filters allow us to even out that contrast range, and the result with a filter attached may be something like this. So let's take a quick look back to the image without the filter. So here we have a good foreground but an overexposed sky and here we have a good sky but an underexposed foreground and then we can see them nicely balanced with a graduated filter. There are some pros and cons when choosing which way to deal with this contrast and exposure issue. If we're going to use automatic exposure bracketing we're going to require Photoshop or an image editor that allows you to work in layers and layer masks because you need to seamlessly blend two differently exposed images. Here I'm showing a more high contrast example of the automatic exposure bracketing technique and I've put two images here together in Photoshop. It's also going to involve some learning of the image editing techniques, of course, but you will find videos on this subject on my website, and it's the way I choose to deal with this problem. Graduated filters can negate the need for image editing via layers and masks, but of course graduated filters come at a cost. You also have to carry them, and you have to apply them to the lens. In theory, that's no problem, but in practice, it can get just a little bit of a nuisance, especially if you're in a location where putting your camera bag down to get out the filter, the adapter ring, and the holder is a little bit tricky. So I think this boils down to a personal choice. The other filter that's probably, I think, even more useful than these is a polarizing filter. Most people will be familiar with the effects of polarizing sunglasses and the filters we apply to our lens are applied for much the same reasons. Once they're added to the lens, we can turn them to get the right angle of light and we can see the effect clearly through the viewfinder. Once we've done that, they are great in reducing glare from reflected surfaces and, of course, especially water. They can make white clouds really stand out from the blue skies. They can often give colours that 
little extra richness which is quite appealing in our photographs and they work best when turned 90 degrees to the sun. Some photographers even use them in overcast conditions, especially when they're shooting pictures in the forest, because the polarizing filter can reduce reflections from leaves. Polarizing filters will reduce the light falling on the sensor by at least one stop. But in the conditions we normally use polarizing filters, that really isn't much of an issue.